Because here in Palau, nature is its own entity. It doesn't belong to us. And so we don't use words like resources. We use words like sources. This is a source of water. It's a source of food. It's a food system. It's life system. But this notion of resources, like take them, they'll regenerate, is not a Palauan notion. The Palauan notion says that we are travelers passing through this planet. But it belongs to itself, and we're borrowers. And we must give it thanks, we must give it the respect for giving us life. I think for every island boy, uh, especially in Palau, uh, it's part of growing up. You, know? you, you, you can't help but have a relationship with the ocean. You can't survive without depending on the ocean. So we call the ocean our father and the land our mother. And we we're taught at a very early age that you need to fish to provide for the family. Without this marine environment, we do not have our culture because it's so intricately tied together. Because we are, uh, this is where we get our food, our source of uh, protein. We've always uh, valued a sanctuary of some kind because that's inherent in our traditions and our culture. We've always practiced uh, putting aside a certain part of the reef as a no-take zone because we've always believed that that's how you sustain the population of fish and marine life. So when the United Nations started talking about doing something on the international arena for a Dori Dori goal, you know, conserve at least 30% of your marine resource by the year 20 Dori, we started to say, why don't we think on a larger scale than what we're doing right now? We are small island states, 
but we're actually large ocean states. And if we are going to make a meaningful contribution to this international goal of Dori Dori, then we have to consider a large-scale Palau National Marine Sanctuary. To describe the sanctuary, a lot of people don't realize that it's not really the coastal environment of Palau. It only starts 24 nautical miles offshore, so a long way from land, and then it reaches all the way to the end of Palau's EEZ. Um, it covers 80% of Palau's EEZ, a massive contribution to conservation for one country. So the Palau National Marine Sanctuary, it represents about 600,000 square kilometers of ocean water. So this is quite a, uh, a, lar a large area. It's uh, designated as a, a no-take zone. There is absolutely no taking of fish or any, anything from these territorial waters. The reason to go large in ocean conservation is because you have a lot of mobile species that go all over the place. You are not just protecting your country's EEZ. You are putting a sanctuary in the whole region for a lot of mobile species, um, and that includes habitats as well. So in the greater scheme of things, you are creating this kind of safe haven that will benefit productivity across the region. This is where we feel proud, we feel happy, that we took a customary practice, a traditional practice, and enlarged it, but in a way it was our contribution to what the international community and scientists have said needs to be done. If you think about large-scale MPAs and you think about large ocean conservation, this is relatively new. And we have an opportunity here as Palau um, to test out how to do this well, to test out how we can go out, put in the monitoring, put in the research to really be able to track the success or the failure of a large-scale MPA. And I think the value of doing that um, is really setting up the, the tools and the knowledge for other people to do the same. Because we have uh, a very unique uh, marine space on the planet, we have the opportunity to conduct research, expand science knowledge, and advance the marine science knowledge of the world. But even more important, allowing it to be a space that we can advance the knowledge of our own children. Um, if anything, our children should be some of the best marine science of the world because it's our backyard. I remember when um, in our family we started learning how to dive because we had an in-law that was an instructor and we would all go out for this uh, diving lesson. <laughs> she had such a difficult time <laughs> trying to teach us and she says, you know what the problem is teaching Palauans? Uh, you think you're fish. You get under that water and you have so much freedom to move around that you're, you're violating all the rules of scuba diving safety. <laughs> so she had a hard time trying to teach us, but I think that's what we should um, aim for is not just contribute to expanding marine science knowledge of the world, but also developing some of the best scientists of the world, because that's what we have. That's what we know. Sadly, on the other side of the coin, there are countries that really don't give a darn about you know, the ocean because they, they feel like it's, it's far away from them or they're hardly ever going to, to go there. But as we, science is telling us now, <laughs> we're all connected by the ocean, and connected in the good things that comes from the ocean, but also connected in the bad things that can come about because of the deterioration of the ocean. And that's why it's everybody's problem. Everybody's challenge. Environment, environment. Tungul 
alubo teya umum kororon kal el me adra blula sege da do abo besri keda re la ngadia de do ngot do ora ro le la a omnier mangi mora lo ke la kongara mora ro ko ik ko asuba ngar ke tra o maler o oi bakti wa se a amar mal ro da o adia bal liol tam nar ke me Armal malrada wa ara kita rada mal malrada. Ya mal malrada wa amlangu osngir mal wol be. Ada be emlangu osngir betul la auto. Aku asai nebdo meser tiang. Emang itu osngir tu mau betul la umur eu be. Edo mal wol be amari ge tau spe. Lekar omelnya daripada yang sulit rasa.